There we go. Let's talk about some games finally. Not some silly collector's editions. We Happy Few had its, what is it called, Life in Technicolor update this week. And with that came a price increase. And that also brought with it, hey, we're releasing the game on PS4. It's coming out next March. Uh, I looked at this before the price increase, saw the update coming, and said, I'll get in on this. I think I was one of those people pretty impressed with what was shown when the game was unveiled. Unveiled? Something. Over a year ago, I'm into it. I'll buy the game. It's $30. Now it's $50. When it comes out, it's going to be $60. So I got the game for half off. That's the way I'm looking at it. Plus, I get to play it now. That's really cool. Now, the biggest thing to me, and, and perhaps the most important, is that there have already, I've seen dramatic changes. I played maybe three hours of the game prior to the Life and Technicolor update, which came out on Wednesday, and I played a couple hours after. And my biggest problem with the game was the inventory. Before the update came out, the inventory was just awful. It was the, you know, the classic Resident Evil 4 squares where like oh the bunch of metal scrap takes up one square this billy club takes up two squares and you have to jumble the tetris around to to figure out what you're doing with the inventory and it was so obnoxious because in a game where you're finding loot and you're scrounging around and you have to deal with you can see in the top corner things like your health your thirst your hunger you gotta kind of deal with all these different elements hey dark knight uh it's annoying to go into the inventory and have so much nonsense you have to sift through. The pictures were really tiny. You didn't know what anything was. Thankfully, the update that came out on Wednesday, which a pretty substantial update, changed a lot of the UI and completely revamped the inventory system, giving it something more akin to a Skyrim. We happy few, it's on the screen. Uh, giving it more of a Skyrim uh, system you can sort everything a lot nicer this is equipment this is health items you can see it here the pictures are big you know what it is it works so much better than it did before and that was just in this latest update and i'm hoping updates like this keep happening that really improve it because what's here is very enjoyable i did it's not one of those games where you're on the edge of your seat but it's just kind of this calming peacefulness of running around this world finding these little quests. It is a survival game. It is procedurally generated. Um, well, you'll see what the game is. It's me looting weird corpses <laughs> for about 20 minutes the whole time. And it's, it's you know, finding water. And you gotta, okay, I'll fill this water jug so I have water. And I'll, I'll find this food, but this food is rotten. So it's gonna make me sick. Now I can take this pill that I found, or I can craft this pill, or I can craft this and craft that. That's all nice. And the crafting isn't too crazy. I don't think it lets you go back to your base and put all the stuff in this little storage chest and then you can craft with it anywhere in the world. So you, you don't have to worry about a bunch of nonsense um, carrying around with you. They are not uh, doctors, they're cops, but they're like all disheveled. I'm in the basically the slums area. It's the very beginning of the game. Um, they're the slum police. For some reason, and what I'm doing right now, is they're guarding a minefield that I could never find any mines in, but I sure did loot everything they had. I know, great cop outfit. The suit doesn't exactly... So to, to give you some uh, more info, there's another system where people are suspicious of you if you, um, you know, like, go too close to them or they're in their house. It'll pop up and say, like, hey, you're being suspicious. And one other thing is you start the game with this character in a suit, in like a full suit that doesn't look like garbage, like the ones the cops are wearing. And the game tells you like, hey, you look too nice. You're suspicious. Craft a shitty suit. And the way you craft it was getting like the suit I have. And then you you like craft it with rocks. So essentially, I just imagine the character in the street just bludgeoning himself with rocks to get his suit all shitty so that the people... I blend in with the, the Denzians of the, the shit slums with my crappy suit now. It's it's really stupid, but they do a, a good job of doing that. They introduce a little quest like that, you know, make your suit. You got to blend in. You got to do this. You got to find this, help the people. Um, I don't know why I'm helping the people. They seem 
kind of crazy and very prone to violence. <laughs> uh, you get too close and all of a sudden it's just time to kill you. All right, well, I'll fight you. I mean, I'm not going to judge the, the fashion police on that. I'm too busy trying to choke them and not have to fight them because the only way to fight them is with this melee combat where you have a club of some kind and it's not super interesting. You're just flailing about with this club, whacking them on the, on the head. <laughs> leave one off like the cops that's how you become a cop you just learn how to undo his buttons uh but the melee combat isn't that good i i really think if they're gonna lean into stealth so much i i want a a trank dart you know i want this to be metal gear solid where i'm just shooting someone from afar getting a headshot and sneaking around because taking out a little mallet as you'll see here in a second taking out a mallet and aiming at someone's head and, and whacking them three or four times isn't that exciting. Stealth takedowns are interesting, that is fun, but the other way about it is just not quite right. You can throw rocks, but a rock is hardly a, you know, a silenced pistol to shoot someone in the head. And I don't know, it's weird to say, like, I wish this game had guns. That's I think that's weird. Maybe it does. I am in the early area. There's supposedly a bunch of story content that they're now going to weave into these updates. That That's what the Life and Technicolor update basically was. A bow would be cool. Yeah, a bow would actually be a really nice suggestion. Um, but this update's... Starting with this update and after, there's going to be more story content. And that's what I, I kind of like about this in terms of I'm not a big um, like don't starve kind of player I'm not I'm not into that it's just too random there's there's not enough of a goal this game gives you goals it has quests everywhere uh, not not everywhere everywhere but around the map there are things to do with, oh I found this water pipe that's broken okay I gotta fix it well how do I fix it oh I can craft this material I can go over here and you're as you're exploring you're finding other quests that are advancing this main narrative one that i don't really understand it seems like everyone in this world is crazy on this drug called joy that just makes them see everything as good and happy um, i haven't found any joy in the game to m see what that does um, it's got a really slow pace which i think no you'd think the spear is cool it's not cool because uh, the stick i have right there is a. Uh, Unless you mean like a throwing spear. The stick is lame. Something about joy. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But I do enjoy the game. There is something really fun about just wandering around, picking berries, and not having to worry about uh, crafting a base or putting up defenses because it's night. The only thing that changes at night is, uh, okay, throwing a spear. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, if it was something that knocked them out instantly, then I'd be down for it. But if it's something where it's just going to damage them and I have to fight them, no. Um, anyway, the only thing that changes this night is these shitty cops, as you've <laughs> seen. They uh, are roaming about looking for anyone who's out. You're not allowed to be outside at night. It's a curfew. That's what that's called. And so that just offers you a little bit of uh, resistance there. I guess it is kind of like the game Thief, yeah. I never really played Thief. That's the thing, too, is it's not stealthy enough to be a stealth game. It's got too much other baggage with the crafting and all of that. To The mechanics don't work well enough for it to be a full stealth game. Especially when you're walking into someone's house and you just turn the corner and they're there and you're like, they just want to kill you for no reason. And they just pull out some kind of giant stick and they start flailing at you. That's not exactly stealthy. You know, the way I play a Dishonored is completely in the shadows. And this doesn't have a system of you're hiding in the shadows. No one can see you. Maybe if it told you, I keep writing seven at the end of the words. I don't know. I kind of think it's cool. Um, seven's a good number. It doesn't tell you, oh, you're hidden in the shadows. It'll just, it basically does the opposite and says oh you're being suspicious but anything else you don't know you don't know if you're hidden and i think maybe the game progresses more and you get more weapons and all these other things that helps the stealth because otherwise it's i don't know am i just constantly <laughs> 
going to have this kind of lame stealth. Um, I, who knows? Who knows? And I loved, I never, like I said, I never played Dishon uh, Thief, but I loved Dishonored. The I didn't play Dishonored 2 yet, but I loved Dishonored. And, and that's what I like about this is it has that, all the crafting and the procedural generation and you're finding books that give you different stats and you also have to manage your hunger and all that. I like that with the with the stealth and with some light combat. I, I do think combat's not great. Uh, but then again, it's what, coming out in March? It's like nine months out. There's going to be a ton of story content, a bunch of different characters you can play as that all have their own stories. That I'm into. You can play the game also. It, yeah, it has a lot of similarities to Skyrim in terms of the inventory now and the the melee combat. But there's nothing else. It's modern day, yeah. It's mo it's it's modern day, but the world went to shit, and everyone's addicted to drugs. So it looks almost. This guy didn't see me for some reason. It looks almost. <laughs> I like the seven. It looks almost. Uh, Bioshocky in its presentation, but it's it's definitely more of a stealth thing, and it has the combat of Skyrim for better or for worse, um, but without the the variety. You know, at least in Skyrim, you could have a bow or you could have magic. I have rocks I can throw. I have a, a like a smoke grenade, but it's not it's not quite the same. Dealing with this guy, if I could stealth shoot him in the back of the head like that's an awesome thing i would like to be able to do but it just isn't a thing um yeah i looped around him it isn't anything that happens but you can do some cool stealth moments like that i really do enjoy that uh, maybe if it was in third person but i mean these are all just weird things because the game could change quite significantly by the time it comes out in terms of that like i i said at the beginning of this they completely changed uh the the inventory for the better like way improved it just with this last update so if they keep adjusting the stealth or adding um other elements it could be super super cool i don't mind the beta typing i like the sevens it's enjoyable to me um i think there was something else about the game there's quests there's a lot of crafting it can be a little vague of well, i need to find right now i need to find a and power up a power cell um, but I don't know how to do it I can't find it where I need to do it so I'm just wandering around I was 12 20 a.m. damn I tell you to go to bed but you're the only one here hanging out so I'm not gonna tell you to do that but I think it's it's well worth it and the thing is I got into it before they raised the price and now I would tell people to kind of wait and see you know, it went up from thirty to fifty dollars. I don't know, Europe funny money, similar increase, right? Um, and then it's going to go up even further when it actually comes out as a boxed, like full retail game. I don't know. I think for thirty dollars to get in here in the ground floor and play around with it, that's really cool. But for fifty, that's really going to be your mileage may vary, and. It's worth at this point just waiting until way closer to release to see how it changes. And then, <laughs> you should have heard. So this is me playing the game, right? And then I opened the door. I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's dead. And it has weird stuff like that. I don't know why the guy was there. Uh, who knows? And it is early access. I think I started the game maybe six times. And the game has crashed to des uh, desktop three of those six times that I've played the game. Not a great track record on that so far, and usually games don't crash or, or cause, uh... yeah, that's the thing. Well, that, that's why I bought it uh, early, because I, I did it early before this update, it was 30, and then they raised it. But that that's the thing too, is they're adding all this story content into it to make it like a full game with a bunch of different uh, playable characters that are all different have their own different stories and you can play it on different difficulties there's ones with permadeath and ones without permadeath so there's a lot of stuff going on there and at the point like i said it's fifty dollars just wait until more updates get get going and see if that's worth it for you because uh yeah because it was well, not out yet 
you know, that's the thing. And I don't disagree with you. There are better games with this, but it it does have that same survival, whatever, Minecraft feel that you're just wandering around doing nothing, having a lot of fun. I don't disagree with you, though. There are loads better games, even for $30, what it, the price I paid for it, that you could probably be better at. But this is early access. It's nine plus months out. Who knows if it even makes that date. It isn't a small uh, game. From what I've played, even this this one character is like three hours in this area, and there's more stuff after this. You know, it's not a short experience. I go right now and I talk to these weirdos about this duck they're worshipping. They're worshipping, not worshipping, but they have this duck <laughs> in this boiling bottle of water, or pot of water. It's got a cheeky British humor to it that's fun. Uh, it's... You know, it's not going to change the world, but it's not out yet, as I keep saying. We'll see. They're all talking about the, the duck. And then I get the duck, and then I get to craft something with the duck. It's kind of weird. And it's, well, it's a different game, though. Team Fortress 2 is a completely different game. And it's also, like, ten years old. <laughs> but I have a fun, uh... It's a different type of fun. I I think, you know, you mentioned playing and loving Thief. We'll see. We'll see if the stealth stuff gets more interesting or if it remains base level as it is. I think even the simple introduction of a stealth option with, like, a bow would change the game dramatically. That would really make me play the game a lot differently and have a lot more fun with it. Not that I wasn't having fun. But the whole show cannot be We Happy Few. I have one other game to talk about. Move on to there in just a second. 